One of the reasons for my trip to Scotland was to solve a family mystery. We know a lot about our relatives on the United States side of our history, but there has always been a missing link with our distant ancestors in Scotland. So I set out to locate any information about my great-great-great-grandparents, Donald and Mary Glassgun, who traveled from the Isle of Skye to North Carolina in 1807. Where did they come from? How did they meet? What prompted them to make such a journey? The evidence I had to work with was meager. There's the gravestone at their final resting place in the Yuchi Valley, a remote location on the Florida Panhandle not far from where Hurricane Michael made landfall. We have a short passage in a history book about the guns of North America, and a few family stories handed down many generations. That's about it. The family tales recount that Donald Gunn was a fisherman in the Isle of Skye. Mary was a young serving girl working in Glasgow. It's said that Donald kidnapped Mary, whether or not she was a willing kidnappee is not known, and took her back to the Isle of Skye, where they married and started a family. A book about the guns, written by Robert Russell Gunn, adds a few further details. Donald and Mary Glass traveled with a group of families to America. They stayed together as they moved from North Carolina to South Carolina and finally to Florida. According to this historian, the group founded the Yuchi Valley Presbyterian Church, which still stands today. From my immigrant ancestor's gravestone next to the church, we know each of their birth dates, as well as their death dates. Family tales also note that Donald was illiterate, but Mary could read and write a little. The first stage of my search took me to the northeastern tip of Scotland. It's remote and cold. They say in these parts that one day the wind stopped blowing. Everybody fell over. I followed the winding coastal road to the town of Latherin. There I visited the grounds of the Clan Gun Museum and Heritage Center. The center, formerly a church, is only open summer months, but my interest was to explore the cemetery surrounding the property. The guns are among the great highland clans of Scotland. This northernmost region was home to numerous competing clans, and the guns were both famous and infamous for our warrior ways. The family crest is a raised fist clenching a sword, surrounded by a belt and a brooch with the motto, Aut Pax Aut Bellum, either peace or war. Judging from clan lore, it was usually the latter. I came to these beautiful rolling headlands with a question. Was Donald Gunn originally from this part of Scotland? Narrowing down the location of his birth would greatly help my search. The graves told me an important story. Without much effort, I located several Donald Gunns among the memorials. Though they were dated after my own relations sailed to America, it did confirm that Donald was a common name among the guns of northern Scotland. Another question followed. If I had successfully deduced Donald Gunn's first location, what could account for his relocation? If he was born in Latherin in the northeast, what brought him to work as a fisherman in the Isle of Skye on the opposite coast? Why would he leave the ancestral lands of the Clan Gunn? For this, I needed to go further back into the past like 500 years back. The history of the Highlands is a bloody one. As I've mentioned, the clans fought a lot. In fact, the name Gun, or Gunny, was the Scandinavian word for warrior, as well as the name of the founder of the clan Gun, who came to Scotland near the end of the 12th century. The Guns, the Keiths, the Sinclairs, and many other clans of a region called Caithness fought viciously for centuries over meager resources and small tracts of land. Blood feuds dragged on for generations, and tales of tribal deceit fed angry, senseless cycles of violence. The end came in the mid-18th century, at the hands of the English army. Centuries after William Wallace, the Highland clans, still fighting for their freedom, chose the wrong side of the Jacobite rebellion through their alliance with Bonnie Prince Charlie against the English crown. In 1746, they suffered a crushing defeat that led to a long period of ethnic cleansing and exile. Was Donald Gunn, born in 1763, displaced during these years of oppression, or sometime before during the years of clan warfare? Either way, it seems that Donald, his parents, or his grandparents had been uprooted by war and lived as refugees. 
This is the most likely explanation for why a young man whose origins are from the Northeast would end up a fisherman in the westernmost regions of the country. All this was speculative. As I explored the coastal towns of Latherin, Cliff, and Wick, I had no proof that Donald was born or raised here. History indicates that other guns had dispersed from the region over the centuries and traveled to other parts of Scotland or Europe or the United States. It seemed unlikely Donald was among these, but I couldn't be sure. For the next stage of my search, I tapped into Scotland's vast digitized historical archives. Back in Glasgow, where I was staying with a wonderful family, the Hempseys, I made a reservation with the Mitchell Library, which has a special department dedicated to genealogical research. My plan was to continue looking for clues about Donald Gunn, but Josh, one of the staff archivists, suggested a different approach. He recommended we search first for my great-great-great-grandmother. Excellent advice. Using a photo of the headstone from Florida, I entered the birth date of Mary Glass into the extensive database of public records. Immediately we found a match, a combined birth and baptismal record for Mary Glass, lawful daughter of Hugh Glass and Mary Crossuck, born and baptized in Kirkmaiden Parish on July 25, 1781. Since no other Mary Glasses came up as having been born in all of Scotland in the year 1781, or any year close to it for that matter, it's a good chance this is the same Mary who became Donald's wife. But how? Kirkmaiden is a parish, a county, on the southernmost peninsula of Scotland. In other words, as far from the clan gun lands as you can get. How did Donald cross paths with her? We know they met in Glasgow, but how did Mary get there? For that, I did a search of her parents, Hugh Glass and Mary Crossock. Nothing turned up for her mother, but I found a record of the death of a Hugh Glass in Glasgow in 1793 at the age of 41 from consumption, probably TB. His age would make him a suitable candidate for the same Hugh Glass who was Mary's father, and his death being in Glasgow would fit with her whereabouts at the time of her fateful meeting with Donald. What threw me off, though, was his listed profession, change keeper. I assumed this was some kind of financial service, like a money exchanger or banker, and that wouldn't fit with what little we know about Mary's situation as a serving girl. Then I searched for the definition of a change keeper online and made a discovery. A change keeper is an old Scottish word for an innkeeper. That provided a possible explanation for how Hugh and Mary met. Maybe her family traveled to Glasgow and stayed at his inn. It also would account for Mary's birth in Kirkmaiden, if her mother went home to give birth. Maybe Mother Mary's health was poor. There's no record that the couple had any other children. Mary Glass's birth date and baptism are the same, whereas others on the parish registry are days apart. Was the parson present at the birth for fear that the lives of mother and daughter were at risk? Did Mary Crossack Glass survive childbirth? There's no way to know. But we do know that Mary Glass had found her way to Glasgow by the turn of the century. She would have been about 17 years old. The possibility that Hugh Glass was an innkeeper in Glasgow would also provide a bridge between Donald and Mary the Younger. If she was a serving girl, it's quite possible she was working for or with her father in Glasgow. Maybe Donald was also a guest at the inn. I realize this is highly conjectural. Many records from the 1700s were lost in Scotland because of wars and fires. There are only parish records. No census data is available until the first national census in 1855. But it is fun to discover these clues and try to piece together a narrative. If Mary's father died young and around 1793, it's quite possible she was relatively free from family ties and more than willing to be kidnapped by Donald and taken to the Isle of Skye. From there, it's also not hard to piece together their motives for setting out for America. If my theory is correct, that the purge of the Highlanders in the late 18th century led to the displacement of Donald Gunn, we know that it was also the catalyst for many Scottish families making the arduous journey to America. It probably seemed a suitable gamble to the young couple, who were relatively disconnected from their Scotland homes 
and hearing often in a port region like Isle of Skye of great opportunities in the new world. So that's my educated guess as to what brought Donald and Mary Gunn together in Scotland and then brought them to America in 1807. I thought of other searches I could have done after I left the library, but I'm happy with what I was able to find. I downloaded copies of all the documents if any family members want to search further. My that came last night will soon gar money fairly For ships o' war he just come in and landed royal jelly Come through the head of a room and get